was not there, but Mary was told by the, the angel that behold you shall conceive and you shall bear a, uh, bear a son and you call him Jesus for he shall save people from their sin. So I believe that when Jesus was growing, you know, like kids say, who, who is my mom? Who, who is my dad? You know, so he said, oh, how did it come about? And then mom would say, oh, the angel came and told me, you know, that was a reported speech. Mm -hmm. But when he came to the, uh, to the point of submission there at the river, that's why we see God manifested in all three forms. I mean, in all three, the Trinity of God. We see God, the Son, obeying and coming out of water. And we see God, the Holy Spirit, descending like a dove. And then we hear God the Father speak. Now, God the Father is speaking to him, Jesus, and say, You are my beloved Son. So now it's not about what he was being told by the mother and other people. It's about what he's hearing himself from heaven. Amen? Amen. At the same time, the people who are around there, they needed to hear. And now God says, this is my beloved son. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is, it's not just good enough for God to call a pastor or God to call a worship leader. We have also to hear from heaven and accept that gift. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. You are my beloved son. But if it's just the end of it, if we don't receive you, then you just keep being a son of God. Mm -hmm. But if we hear that this is my beloved son, then we can cooperate with heaven. Mm -hmm. And when we cooperate with heaven, we get the blessing from heaven. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Normally, God operates in patterns. And if you can understand the pattern that God works, it's easy for us to intercept the move of God. Mm -hmm. God operates in pattern, and when we understand the, the, the move of God, the pattern in which God operates, then we can intercept and receive the blessing. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's how Jesus established, I mean, started his ministry by establishing the identity. Pray the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back and take a case study. And I'm going to read um, from the book of First Samuel, chapter 16. I'm going to explain three anointings of David. Three anointings of David. Now, um, in the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 10 to 13, it's an account of prophet Samuel going to the house of Jesse to anoint the king because Saul has rebelled. He was told by God to do A, B, C, D and he did what he thought it was okay and God rejected him. But we see that before from the previous chapters that uh, Samuel was interceding. Samuel was pleading with God so that uh, uh, Saul could have more chances but God says, how long are you going to continue praying and crying for this man? Mm -hmm. I have rejected him. Mm -hmm. So go to the house of Jesse. And when you go there, I'll show you the man to anoint. So he comes to the house of Jesse. Amen. Amen. And, and he comes there and Jesse thinks about his sons. He has all these sons. Says, yeah, I think my firstborn son, he's big. He has big muscles. Bring him to the man of God to be anointed. He comes and God says, no, this is not the one. The second one comes, the third one comes, the fourth one comes, the fifth one comes. And they are kind of like frustrated, like, did you really God send me here? You know, sometimes, Pastor Lucy, you can be here like, did I really hear from God? <laughs> I'm trying, people came yesterday, men came, they were so happy, they ate my breakfast, and we've been praying, and then the next day, nobody showing up. Mm -hmm. You feel like, did the real God call me to do this? Mm -hmm. So this is the same frustration that Samuel had. Mm -hmm. He has come to the house of Jesse. So like, am I in the right address? Mm -hmm. Is this where with this Samford? Mm -hmm. Chem not Chemsford. Chem Chemsford. Chemsford. Mm -hmm. so am I really in Chemsford? Because I was told there there's a king. Mm -hmm. But there's nobody here. So the Bible says in Samuel 16, verse 10 to 13, his father and brothers. I mean, no, no, not his father's brother. Let me just uh, read that uh, from the Bible. So let's go to First Samuel. First Samuel or Samuel. 
First Samuel chapter 16. And we're going to read from verse number 10. Okay? Are we there? Yes. Okay, so the Bible, Jesse and had seven of his son pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. He will not see, we will not sit until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was growing with health and a fine appearance and handsome features. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him. Anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from the day of that day on, on the spirit of the Lord came up powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. So they are here waiting for, for the king. And then they say, they say one gay guy, he has a tender skin. He's just a teenager taking care of the sheep. He said, we are not going to sit until these guys come. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the first anointing of David... He was anointed by prophet Samuel. Mm. His father did not know anything about that anointing. Mm -hmm. His brothers did not know anything about that anointing. Mm -hmm. Even himself, he did not realize that he was anointing, mm -hmm. anointed. Mm -hmm. It takes God and the prophet to realize mm -hmm. the gift that was in this man mm -hmm. who was a sheep keeper. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes God called me to raise army and he told me, you call God out of people. My worship leader today, she came to me, the one who was, the girl who was leading worship today in the church, she came 2015, broken, they don't know how father, they came, the family was, and they said, somebody told me, take this pastor. So she came, and we've been working, we've been working, and today, four years later, she's able to stand and command men and women to stand up and raise her head mm -hmm. and sing. Amen. Amen. But when she was coming, they, were, they thought she was a problem. Mm -hmm. And there was no problem. There was something inside of her. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you people, you need to understand that uh, there's some gift that are inside of you. You don't even realize that they're inside of you. Mm -hmm. But the prophet or the man of God or the woman of God will say, you, you can do this. And sometimes you feel like, really? I don't think I can do that. Mm -hmm. But God knows. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the, the, the hardest part is this. He's now anointed the king. All right? So when you anointed the king, where are you supposed to go? Palace. Okay, let's say like Trump is elect, was elected the president of this country two, two years ago. Whether you like it or not, he's the president. Mm -hmm. So where was his destination? The White House. I think I saw that Pennsylvania Avenue somewhere in D.C. yesterday when I was coming. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, that is the address. Mm -hmm. But you see, David the king, he has an anointing. And he goes back to the field mm -hmm. to take care of the sheep. So his congregation was sheep. Man. Mm. <laughs> Man. Amen. Mm. I want to tell you that the hardest part and the most troubling thing in the first phase of anointing is when you have the anointing and you don't have a throne. Mm -hmm. The kingship comes with the throne. Yeah. Now the guy has the anointing to be a king. But there's no throne for him. Mm -hmm. So he's back there frustrated. But you know what he was doing? Inside that place, he was perfecting his gift. Mm -hmm. Because he was singing to the Lord God. Oh my. He was not looking for, 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 for people to rule. He was just content. He was just happy. He said, there's a king. When the time comes, God will take me there. But he anointed me. So I'm fine. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's, he's singing. And I, I believe his sheep were happy. Mm -hmm. Sheep. <laughs> he's worshiping his God in that particular place. He didn't allow that like, no, I need to go there. That's my, my throne. You know, uh, God said that this guy has been rejected. He need to go. He need to go. No, he was just in that place. Amen. Amen. So I want you to remember that the first anointing, it was just God and the apostle. Mm -hmm. It's just like a story of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It was just Mary and the angel. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm. And some few um, shepherds who knew like there was a king. Mm. 
but he, his ministry was, I mean, nobody even cared. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it, Jesus was born like today, like CNN, the baby shower would be huge because people would be just sending gift to everybody. But you know, the baby shower of Jesus was organized by the angels. Mm -hmm. The Magi is from the East. I tell people, don't worry too much. Don't do things based on the fear of God because you are blessing. God is able to organize a baby shower for you mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I come to our church. We are many here when you have a baby shower. Don't worry. You know, Jesus, the baby shower was organized by... <laughs> Amen. Angels. They just came all over. For no card, nothing. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, it becomes very frustrating when you have anointing and you don't have a way to express that anointing. Mm. So David was anointed. There's no outlet for expressing his anointing. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? He go back to the field and enjoy being in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. The second, uh, the second phase of anointing. So uh, David get anointed, and then uh, one day there was this war and. Uh, uh, his father Jesse sent him to the battlefield to go there and uh, uh, check on his brothers. So he gets there and he finds that there's a um, there's a showdown between the Philistines and the Israelites. And there was a valley there, and every morning these uncircumcised Philistines would stand and insult them and, and, and talk bad things about Israel and about God. And then he says, So what will be done to the man who will kill this and remove this? Uh, this shame from our nations. Mm -hmm. And his brothers say, we know your pride, we know your heart. You know, we just come here to 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 to, 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 to brag and show your pride. Because they have heard that he has been anointed. Mm -hmm. Anointed. Mm -hmm. Now they don't want that. Mm -hmm. But finally you know the story how David is slew Goliath. Okay? Mm -hmm. He killed Goliath and after killing Goliath now he uh, up, um, not apostle. Uh, the, the the king saw starts going after his soul. Okay, he did a good thing. He delivered Israel, but now Saul is feeling threatened, and as a rat, he start chasing him. So David moved now from where he was comfortable in the field with the sheep. Now he become a fugitive, running. After, I mean, running for his life. Mm. He's running from cave to cave. Mm. Uh, he can't sleep well. Uh, and um, he, he came to the point that uh, he was trying to show his father that he had just a good intention. He was not after the throne. But every time King Saul wanted to kill him and tried to kill him. But he could not kill him because you cannot kill what God has already ordained. Amen. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. So he, he, he was in that place. And we see that at Ziegler, in this place of Ziegler, he was there with some few people who believed in him. Some few people, his wife, and I mean his, his, his closest people, they were protecting him. And I want to say that in the second phase of anointing, you do with your own people, your own tribe. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. There's something that you cannot do with everybody. Mm -hmm. When you are anointed, only God knows. But now the other people who will take your anointing and accept you are very close, either friends or family members. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what I am seeing here. When you have your own son play keyboard, mm -hmm. you have somebody worship you, they believe in you, they cannot stab you. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. So he was back there in Ziegler. And he's staying there and he's running from one place to another place because always he's trying to prove to Saul that I am not after the throne. Mm -hmm. I'm anointed, but I'm not after your throne because I know that at the appointed time, God will deliver mm -hmm. that throne to me. Mm -hmm. But at, on the other side, this man, he just want to kill this person, want to kill this person. But he keep on just protecting his heart that he don't take matters on his hands. Mm -hmm. I want to just bring this to you that as you continue doing what you are doing, you are going to come to times where people will just want to take you off. They find like a threat and they want to, but you have to make sure that your heart is not offended mm -hmm. and you don't start 
pushing or finding people and, or removing other people or moving other people from other churches. You just stay and do what God has called you. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, after that, we see that after all this, like 15 years later, from the day that he was anointed, uh, King Saul was killed in the battle. He was killed by um, the enemies. And after that, we see that in 2 Samuel 1 to 4, 2 Samuel 1 to 4, 2 Samuel chapter, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 2, 1 to 4, chapter 2, 1 to 4. So David hears that King Saul is dead. Now you have been in a desert place, city called Zigal, and now he want to move back. At least now I've been hiding, and somebody who have been uh, after my my soul is dead. So where do I go? This is what he did. The Bible says, in course of time, David inquired of the Lord, "Shall I go up to one of the towns of Judah?" He asked. The Lord said, "Go up." David asked, where shall I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. So David went up with there with his two wives, Ahionam of Jazil and Abigail, the widow of Nabon of Camel. Okay? David also took the men who were with him, each with his family, and they settled in Hebron and its town. Then the men of Judah. Amen. Amen. See there that David has some men that were with him in all this fugitive life. When he was running, he had some few men that he heard. Mm -hmm. Now he hears that this man who is was after your life is gone forever. So he asked God, What shall I do? And God go, go to Hebron and settle there. And when he went to Hebron, that's where he started his family. Now he don't have to run after his life. He said, but when he came to Hebron, okay? Mm. Now the Bible says, the Lord, I mean, the men of Judah came to Hebron and there they anointed David king over the tribe of Judah. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. So you see now, the anointing is coming from him and few men and he being anointed to become one of the uh, the king of one of the tribes of the whole Israel. Amen? Amen. Israel had 12 tribes. Now he's moving from just being a fugitive and he's becoming now the king of one tribe. Amen. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Always when people hear this is my beloved son and they accept and they partner with God, something happens. Amen. Pray the name of Jesus. Mm. Now, uh, uh, Samuel and the father of David, they knew that he was the king, but the tribe of Judah has not accepted yet. Mm. So he was fugitive. But when they brought him and they said, be king over us, he became the king and God started blessing them from that very city. Amen. Pray the name of Jesus. Mm. So in Hebron, what happened when he was seated there, he, he was the king of this city. He started building, I mean, establishing his own family, all the people that were with him through thick and thin. They started prospering. But still, after the death of King Saul, one of his sons, he became the king over the northern. So he was the king of 11 tribes. And frequently they will come and attack David. They will come and attack David. And uh, after that, David marshaled his, his people and they fought a battle with these people. Uh, and they, this guy was killed and eliminated. And we see after this, we see now the third anointing of David. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And the third anointing of David, we read from the book of Second Samuel chapter 5. 1 to 4. The same place where we are. We just go 2 Samuel chapter 5 1 to 4. 5 1 to 4. Now this is what the Bible says. All the tribe of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, alright? He's now in Hebron. And said, all the tribe of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, 
We are your own flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. In the past, while Saul, Saul was the king of, over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaign. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to you, you will shepherd my people Israel and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel has come to the king of uh, David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king of uh, Israel. Amen. David was 30 years old when he became the king, and he reigned for 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned over Israel and Judah for 33 years. Mm -hmm. So making total years 40. 40. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. So we see the, 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 the pattern here. First of all, uh, he was just a shepherd boy. He knew nothing, but God knew that he is anointed. He is the king. Mm -hmm. So he sent Samuel to come and anoint him. Mm -hmm. When he was anointing him, his father, his brother, they don't even know about it. And himself, he didn't know about it, but he's anointed. And after the anointing, instead of seeking the throne, he went to humble himself with the sheep, taking care of the sheep and perfecting his gift. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. When he overcame that test, because it is a season, it's a test. Many times when God anoints us, we start fighting for throne. You should not be fighting for throne. Mm -hmm. You should be fighting for the anointing mm -hmm. and uh, having the channels God. Mm -hmm. Now after that we see when he has an opportunity to demonstrate the power of God, mm -hmm. he killed and slayed Goliath. Mm -hmm. After slaying Goliath, now he become a fugitive. He's running after uh, 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 from, from Saul. And so he's keep on chasing him and wherever he go he'll come and he's trying to really prove that i'm not after the throne mm -hmm. i am anointed i'm okay i want you to reign as long as the lord wants mm -hmm. and he overcome that this was uh, there was a time when he had an opportunity to kill so mm -hmm. but he said i cannot touch the anointed man of god mm -hmm. so most of the time when you are in the, the we are going to that phase of anointing you have all the opportunity maybe you are here and somebody can you know what i i, I want to come maybe you see that there's somebody who is leading worship in somebody's church and and sometimes they want to really come i remember when i started my church very few people and people would just come and say pastor i don't like my church i'm coming to you say no 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 just stay where you are mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. I, I don't want you to because god will see me through mm -hmm. and, and I, I remember some one lady, she say one day she says, I'm coming, I'm not going to sing, but I'm just coming. Mm -hmm. Because you see, when you have a good heart, you are not to keep people from their throne. You just wait for the appointed time of God. Amen. So he was there now, and he has all of these few people helping him to run. And then when he hears that uh, Saul has been already being eliminated, the men of Judah, mm. they come to Hebron mm -hmm. and anoint him mm. as their king. Amen. Now he's the king of the tribe. Mm -hmm. There's no problem of having a church in the tribal line. Mm -hmm. It's maybe a certain season of the anointing. Mm -hmm. But we cannot keep all being the king of Judah. Mm -hmm. Because there is Manasseh, mm -hmm. there is Benjamin, they are waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why I'm encouraged here. If we just make this a Swahili church, mm -hmm. Where will my brother go? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people just think about that tribal line. As long as we can say, praise God in my own language, we are good, we are happy. Fine, if you do that, you just be end up being the king of Judah. Mm -hmm. Because Benjamin don't speak the same language. Mm -hmm. So he was in that pattern for a season. Mm -hmm. And after some times, after fighting with the king of the north and all things, the Bible says, oh, People of Israel, they came to him to anoint him now to become the king over all Israel. Mm. And they said, the Lord surely said, first of all, you led us to battle, number one. Mm. Number two, the Lord has told you that you are going to shepherd my people. Mm. And you are our bond. We are the bond of your bond. You are our, 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 you are our own. So they are talking about identity. Mm. And the moment they accepted that this is my beloved son, mm. They say, yeah, you are the beloved son of God. Mm -hmm. When they accepted that, we see now King David reigning all over the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And they move their headquarters from Hebron to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 
And now not only that he was the ruler of Israel, but he became influential in the whole region. They knew about God of Israel. Amen. Because we see the queen of Sheba coming all the way from, from, from Ethiopia, mm -hmm. all the way to Jerusalem to pay homage because of what God, I mean, uh, that is after, after the death of, 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 of David. But you see many people from, from different places, they are hearing, and now King David is ruling the nations. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. I just felt like I need to encourage you with this. Because you have to understand that this anointing comes with patterns. Mm -hmm. And you have to do the right thing in the right time. Mm. On the right time. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. If, 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 if David has made a mistake that I'm anointed now, I'm not going to take care of the sheep. Mm -hmm. I want the throne. He would have been killed. Mm. But he accepted, yeah, I'm anointed, but I'm waiting for the time of the Lord. Amen. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to encourage you because... Whenever you move with God, every there is a succession. And when you come to, to this level of anointing, there is provision for that. Mm. You see, when he was by himself with the sheep, he didn't want to need any protection. When he moved to Zigza, God brings some few men that are with him. Mm. They are going with him. We see wherever he go, he come. And uh, our, our king Saul is furious about these people. He wants to kill them. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this, my sister. Maybe God has raised you for this time that you can be with the woman of God. Mm -hmm. Wherever she goes, you're going to have many enemies. Mm -hmm. But you are standing there because you know there is anointing which is in this woman of God. Mm -hmm. And with time, it's going to manifest. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So now king is raising, raising all over the nation mm. of Israel. He's not on reigning all over the nation of Israel. He's reigning in every nation. They understand there are some few people who are really under the cover of God mm. through King David. Mm. And he became so powerful. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. A few years ago, about two years ago, the Lord spoke to us <coughs> prophetically that we are going, our church is going to our third level of anointing. For I told you that we started a church with very few people, about seven people. I was the van driver. I was the keyboard player. I was everything in the church. And my wife was everything in the church, who cleaned the church. You, you are very blessed. You have a place you can come and you, when you set up, I, I saw this set up yesterday, the same thing. Okay, for us, it was not like that. Mm -hmm. You have to come early, put everything together, set up everything. After that, you have to tear down everything. Guess what? It's me and my wife doing that. For almost several years, we're doing that. And we invite people like you did. I remember the first Christmas party uh, we did, 2009. Our church was about a year old. I invited people for Christmas dinner. And we had more than a hundred people showed up that day. We didn't have an usher. We didn't have anybody. So people are eating. Kids are all over the place. They are touching. And we are, we are kind of like being hosted by another church. Where we're just having like a free place. But we can't touch their stuff. And I'm there. The kids are all over the place. They're touching guitars. And by the end of that day, I'm so tired and frustrated. And then we, we come on Thursday, some few ladies, we are holding our hands. God, we are praying for people, more people. I opened my eyes and said, no, don't pray like that. We don't need people. <laughs> they look at me and say, what? Pastor, are you okay? I said, we don't need people. We need workers. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. In the cave, you strategize. Mm. When you're in the cave, don't do stuff of Jerusalem like you are the king. You have no throne. Mm -hmm. You have to do things in the cave. Mm -hmm. So when we, we did that, I, and, I, and I told them, honestly, I don't need people. Because when you have people and you don't have workers, they become stressed. Mm -hmm. So we are doing that. And I remember 2009, one apostle came to our church. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's preaching. My church at that time, they didn't know anything about prophetic. And I'm promising them there's an apostle coming. And, and he came and I was so scared. I hope God will speak something today. And he told me, God never disappoints his people. So he's there. We have like a few people and he's doing that. And he's saying, you are here in this place. And this is the cave of David. 
-hmm. He said, you are not renting this place. This is the cave of David where you are raising up yourself and making yourself grounded before God can send people. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's what we took. Mm -hmm. We understood that was a place of equipping ourselves. Mm -hmm. In that place, I baptized 80 people in water. Mm -hmm. 80, 80, zero. More than 100 people have been baptized in our church. Mm -hmm. It was that place where I started teaching people the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost came, I remember sometimes we could not send people home because they are drunk. Mm. I'm in the house, middle of the night, somebody's calling me. They've been speaking in time, they want to quit, and I don't know what to do. I have prayed for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I've never heard praying for them to stop. So somebody is calling me, and the pastor, para -ma -ma -ma, para -ma -ma, what do I don't know what to do. Pray the name of Jesus. It was in that cave where we come and we are doing the fire tunnel. We are praying for one another. My daughters, like you, I'm here to encourage God can use you. Mm. If you go to political churches, churches that do politics, they have elders. God told me, baptize kids and they help you. I baptize kids. And I remember this one kid, she was eight years old. I said, I'm not baptizing. You have to be 10. She said, no, no, I hear God saying, baptize me. And she's crying. I said, okay, do you believe? Yeah, I baptize her in water. For next one week, she's speaking tongues. She can't quit. She's praying for food, speaking tongues. Everyone <laughs> praying in tongues. And I remember this other lady from Nigeria. She got filled with the Holy Spirit. She can't go home. I had to find a ride for her to be taken home. She can't drive. I remember this another lady from Kenya. She heard they are calling me. So what do you want? They say, pray that she can stop. <laughs> Amazing stuff can happen in the cave. Amen. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, I miss the cave. Mm -hmm. We are now in the big setting, like everything. We have to do time. We have two services. Those times we didn't have to worry about. We can just do. People are drunk in the Holy Spirit. The kids are drunk in the Holy Spirit in the cave. Mm -hmm. It was in the cave where we learned how to take care of ourselves. Now, this was a big church. We have one room. And I told them, I don't want you to clean our room. We'll clean our own rooms. Mm. So we bought our own vacuum cleaner. Mm. We, we started training people. People come. I have to open the door for them. I, I was the only one who had the key with my wife. Nobody was allowed. But I have to come and open for them. So I train people how to clean. Pray the name of Jesus. Mm. The same place where I train people how to pray. The same place people didn't know how to pray. Teach us how to pray. I said, teaching them how to pray. And today, this morning, on my phone, I see my prayer conference with about 10 people who were praying for me mm -hmm. this morning. Mm -hmm. And these people, they didn't know how to pray 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Tell my friend, this is our cave. This is our cave. Amen. Mm. Very important. Mm. It's very, very important. Being in the cave is very, very important. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, our church, if you were by yourself, you will clean for the whole day. Mm -hmm. We own like 18,000 square feet. It was a school. And though everything is my church now. Mm -hmm. So I have to have like three people come down for two hours and everybody is cleaning. If there was no cave, I don't know what I would do. Mm -hmm. And now they know that it's just a multiplication. It used to be one room, now we have 30 rooms. Mm -hmm. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. It was in that cave where by now, it's not, I'm not just talking about that time having a hundred people was a big issue. Today we have five classes for kids on Sunday from, from preschool up to high school. And everybody has to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I don't even see people because they'll be coming to those first service and they go to those classes. I'm telling you, there is a pattern that you have to understand it's a good season to be in the cave mm. because in this cave is where you learn. Amen. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So my brother, to play your piano, I appreciate you playing piano. But you know, even if you play a little off key, nobody will, mm -hmm. will know because it's <laughs> the cave. Yeah. You come to my church, you won't play. My, my son told me the other day, and my daughter, Daddy, you are retired. Because I told them, no, they play so good. When I play with them, they what are you playing? Daddy, you are, yes, can you just move over? Because I'm kind of like hindering them. <laughs> Pray the name of Jesus. So I, I believe this is a place whereby you can say we are singing this song. And pray the Lord when I was learning piano. There was no YouTube. I have to call somebody. Hey, I see four and B on the top. What is that? Oh, that's B flat major. All right. You know, today you can go YouTube. Go to music. I mean, worship.com. And he'll teach you everything, even how to play, how to put your finger and everything. It's a cave. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Ask, are you, what are you doing in the cave? Mm -hmm. 
as your friend. What do you mean, the king? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The quicker you manage that monster of Mundan, and I have anointing, I don't have a throne. The moment you overcome that and understand this is a place of perfecting my gifting, mm -hmm. God will take you to another level. Amen. Pray the name of Jesus. Mm. So God said to us, when we are doing immigration of a new building. To